<laughs> Klingons are next week. Um, so, uh, well, thank you for coming to today's seminar. Um, this presentation here was inspired by a recent trip that I took up to Vancouver, uh, where I was invited by the Simon Fraser University Department of Statistics to give a statistical research seminar. And uh, while that is an honor, and I was looking forward to meeting the faculty there, I have to admit, though, that I was actually looking forward to my visit more so for another reason. This reason was my favorite TV show, Battlestar Galactica, was actually filmed, at least partially, right there on that campus. So when I had some free time when I was visiting Simon Fraser, I dragged my faculty host around with me from site to site to site on campus, visiting these places where the show had been filmed. So for example, here is one place on the left where I actually took a picture of it. And on the right, that's how it appeared from a slightly different angle on Battlestar Galactica. So this whole trip then got me thinking more about how science is often used to solve sci-fi problems. What I mean by that is on sci-fi TV shows, uh, movies, and in books, so often you see science as a tool that's being used to rescue characters from the brink of disaster. Well, why couldn't the type of science that's being used be the statistical science? You know, why not? So today what I'm going to do is talk about one specific problem that occurred on Battlestar Galactica and how the statistical science could have been used to solve that problem and perhaps even dramatically change the course of the TV show. Now before I get too far here, I'd like to ask all of you a question. And that is, who is a Battlestar Galactica fan? All right, so we've got a few. <laughs> I think maybe a few of you also are maybe a little bit shy. You don't want to admit in front of your colleagues that you watch Battlestar Galactica. That's okay. How many of you have at least heard of the TV show? Okay, so good. We at least have a few more. Well, I had anticipated that not a whole lot of you would have been Battlestar Galactica fans, so I have come prepared with a short video. <laughs> so you all get to watch it. Um, anyway, th this video is actually the, uh, the intro to every Battlestar Galactica show. And it tells you, well, what is the story about? Pay special attention in the video to these things called Cylons, because they're going to be pay playing a very important role in this particular presentation. So let me get out of this. And I apologize if there's any feedback here with the speakers. So I was having some problems with it. And let's go to the video. Previously on Battlestar Galactica. Oops. Sorry. Let's actually start over there. <laughs> okay. Previously on Battlestar Galactica. Okay, so they have a plan. Let's get back to the presentation here. So I'm going to summarize what you saw in that video and also give you a little bit more information about what Balsar Galactica is. Let me actually mute that. Okay. So Balsar Galactica is set in a distant, far off corner of our galaxy where humans live. These humans develop things called Cylons. And these silence are cybernetic life forms. And originally they were created to be servants for the humans. Well, these Cylons eventually evolved on their own and rebelled against the humans by destroying the humans' home planets. In the end, 
only about 47,000 humans actually survived the attack by the Cylons. And they all banded together in a ragtag fleet of spaceships trying to get away from the Cylons. Now, the fleet is led by a military Battlestar spaceship named the Galactica, and thus that's where the name Battlestar Galactica comes from. In the video, you saw two different kinds of Cylons. The first kind is a Centurion. So you can see it's this kind of metallic-like robot. Well, again, these, and this was what was originally created by the humans. These Cylons evolved, though, to a new humanoid form. This was originally unknown to the humans that this new form of Cylon existed. And this is what led to the almost complete destruction of humanity. Early on in the TV series, the humans find out that this new humanoid form of a Cylon now exists. And so a very important question for them to answer was, well, how can you distinguish a human from a Cylon? Well, the leaders of the fleet ask a scientist by the name of Dr. Gaius Baltar to develop a Cylon detector. Fortunately for him, the number of Cylons in the fleet is expected to be small. But there are 47,905 individuals in the fleet and they all have to be tested to determine if they are human or Cylon. Well, a few episodes after Baltar is asked to develop a Cylon detector, he does develop one. And in season one's Tie Me Up and Tie Me Down, you see Baltar in his laboratory, and he's surrounded by many, many, many different blood specimens. Each of these blood specimens then are used by the Cylon to detect, detector to determine human or Cylon. And you can see in the caption, it says, a frustrated Gaius Baltar contemplates the immense workload ahead of him as he prepares to test key fleet personnel with his Cylon detector. Now, just to emphasize the, the immense workload that he does have ahead of him, and give you a little bit more uh, information about the problem that he faces, I have another short video. So, let me fast forward here. And I'm going to turn off the mute. And here we go. A mortal one, I'm afraid. That's not that bad, is it, guys? Okay, is that too low? Could you hear it? Okay. The speakers in this, in, the, in this part of the room don't work, so that's one thing that's complicating things here. Well, 